presented by Historic Redeemer Lutheran Church in Elmhurst, Illinois. Yes, today is a special day in the church here uh, where we celebrate the baptism of the Lord. Uh, we just had the Epiphany of our Lord last Friday, and so we're combining our celebration today with Epiphany, uh, the arrival of the Magi uh, to uh, greet the, the child, the Christ child, and then also baptism of our Lord, which is today, and it's always the first Sunday after the Epiphany. Uh, today we also are happy to welcome our new members, those who have joined recently or who are in the process of joining. Uh, we will have a reception after the service down in Setzer Hall, um, so please do make your way down there. Have a slice of king cake. That is a traditional epiphany, uh, uh, delicious thing to eat. So uh, we'll continue our celebration of the season uh, with that, with the reception. Make sure you uh, stop down, introduce yourself, and uh, welcome our new members. Uh, also, uh, the ladies group will be meeting on February 3rd, 3rd. and uh, so if you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to ask me and she will be able to give you all the details for that. And I believe uh, our regularly scheduled things are going to be getting back in here this week, so that means uh, all of our Bible studies, confirmation classes, Sunday school and Bible study are all resuming uh, today, Monday. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him, 
We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. All the earth has done this. 
All earth groans under this self-chosen path away from the paths of God. Adam and Eve learned it the hard way, and so do we. So has all creation. Heaven and nature are both singing, but it's not the same song. Yet our Lord and Creator comes to this world that's so different than the perfect glory of heaven. He's born into this creation in the natural way, born of a mother. He lives a life growing and maturing as we do. He eats and sleeps. He speaks and grows. And notice that in Scripture, this coming season of Epiphany, everywhere our Lord goes, heaven and nature do begin to sing in unison again. It begins at His birth. The angels appear to the shepherds watching over their flocks at night. Those two choirs meet, the heavenly chorus and the earthly ranks of man and animal. And the song rings out in the night, glory to God in the highest, that is, heaven, and peace to his people on earth. Heaven and nature, both spoken of in that song. And that song, first sung by the choirs of heaven, is now sung by us here on earth in the liturgy, nearly every week in that service. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let heaven and nature sing. And the song didn't stop there. The Magi from the East, men of the earth, saw the star of the heavens and knew that this would guide them to the one born King of the Jews. Again, when our Lord arrives, nature begins to do what it was always meant to do, to point us to the Creator. Everything that God has made, from atoms to stars, is meant to turn us in wonder and love to the one who formed him, the one who formed us. And so we celebrate the Magi seeing the star and recognizing it. We rejoice that heaven and nature sang the praises of their creator there. And so the song continues today. On the first Sunday after the celebration of the Magi's visit, the first Sunday after the Epiphany, this Sunday dedicated to the baptism of our Lord. St. Matthew tells us that when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Now there's a lot to take in in that reading. But did you catch that little detail at the very beginning? The heavens were open. Right there, in real time and space, at the slow-moving, mud-churned waters of the Jordan River in the wilderness, heaven was open. Heaven and nature united again. But this time, it wasn't a choir of angels, nor was it a sapphire star in the sky. It was the triune God himself bridging the gap between heaven and earth. God the Holy Spirit entering this fallen world in the form of a dove, God the Son standing on the banks of the river, and God the Father's voice ringing out into creation, This is my Son. Now that scene is typically what catches our eye on this festival day. Heaven is singing about the wonders of God's love that are about to be fulfilled by and through Jesus. But on this particular Sunday, I invite you to tune your ears to hear a lower pitch too. Because nature is also singing on this day. For it's on this day, the baptism of our Lord, that nature is once again directed toward its most noble goal, to do the good and gracious will of its Creator. 
And that is accomplished today with the creation of baptism. Anyone knows that in nature, water is essential for washing most things. Even when something else is added to it, like soap, water is still needed. But anyone also knows that natural, plain water cannot wash away things like sin or death. That is beyond its power in nature. But when the Word made flesh comes to it, things are different. Jesus brings all of heaven with him, opening heaven, pouring out its intangible treasures into the water, the water clasping all of it like a jewel. And Jesus brings it all. He brings the Holy Spirit creating faith, God the Father's well-pleased joy. Jesus brings the entire Trinity and everything he offers into the water. And in baptism, once again, heaven and nature sing. And what is it that they sing together in the water? This is the Son of God, come down to our earth to redeem us. He's come to fulfill all righteousness, to do everything perfectly in our place. He's come to fulfill the law. Everything that he said is good, but we would not do. He's come to be our righteousness, to be our holiness, so that we don't have to achieve it on our own. He's come to be our salvation, our forgiveness, our protection, our life. Now, without all of that, without the Word made flesh, without Jesus in the water, it is just plain water. But with the Word, with Jesus, with the triune God, it is baptism. That is, a life-giving water, rich in grace, and a washing of the new birth in the Holy Spirit. The Word, heaven, and nature, all given to you in baptism. I think something important for us to remember, especially as we're entering this season, when we get to witness all of Jesus' miracles in Scripture, it's important to remember that Jesus didn't just come to do cool things to show off His power and prove who He was. And He certainly didn't come just to fulfill prophecies as if He were a robot or a slave that was bound to do them. Now, He did all of these things, all of these miracles, all of these signs and wonders for you. And that's where baptism comes in. Baptism takes it from just being things that happened at one point, and baptism makes it all yours. Your baptism flows out of Jesus' baptism. That means that the Holy Spirit is given to you descends upon you. That means that God the Father talks about you when he says that he's well pleased. Forgiveness, life, joy, salvation, it's all there in the water. He shows you his hand in all creation, how all of it points you back to him, whether it's as simple as water or as wondrous as stars. It's all His. And now, because of baptism, what's His is yours. Let heaven and nature sing of how He has fulfilled all righteousness for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.